Amazing Spider-Man number two by Nick Spencer made me realize that I really viscerally care about Spider-Man and Peter Parker. And, and it's disgusting when, when I realize that I care about things, but I'm trying to like embrace that, that I care about things. I want to talk about things with people. It's okay to care about stuff even though every fiber of my being hates it now. This comic. The only way I can really describe it is to reference diversity in comics when he says it's a pseudo-comic. And I mean, I'm holding it in my hand. You're seeing it on the screen. It's here, right? I bought it at the comic book store. But a lot of things happen in it and it makes me feel real bad. So, you know what? Let's get into this. I almost hung this up because, you know what? I made that video about hanging comics up. I've got a ton of comics up now, and none of them are Spider-Man. He's my favorite. So if you know of any, like, just doesn't matter when, but not like a thousand dollars. Like, come on, dude. Like, one dollar. Just, or just tell me any really good Spider-Man covers. Because I, I have no clue. I have no clue. So let's just get into this. So let's get back to basics. I, you know, the first issue I didn't think was that bad. It had it had changed some stuff around, but you got to do that. You got to keep that shit fresh. You know what I'm saying? But it was a little off, but I didn't think it was bad. And pretty much at Marvel with like the big heroes, you just got to shoot for it not that bad. That's that's the line here. So we start off. What? Oh shit! We're on the Serengeti. That's that's kind of weird. The world can be a tough place. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't want to live in Africa. I, I mean, maybe South Africa, but even then, right? One day you're just minding your own business, going your own way, and then suddenly everything falls apart. Oh no, blam! It's just a na nat natural, Jesus, natural order of things, right? No matter what path we take, we can be sure there'll be. Pain, but not for me. Okay, so let me just let's just get this shit out of the way. Okay, so we're in a Spider-Man comic. We're seeing some elements here. We're automatically gonna assume that Craven the Hunter is gonna be making an appearance, right? I mean, he hunts he hunts elephants. He's probably well past it. I mean, he's hunting a Spider-Man, so he's probably got his elephant hunting days put it behind him. But you know, he had this period of his life. Maybe it's when he was a child. Maybe he. He cherished the memories of gunning down these huge dinosaurs, so nobody else can gun them down. Because I feel like I feel like it's accurate to say Craven the Hunter's a bit of a dick, but I feel like what Nick Spencer is trying to do here is trying to emotionally manipulate people in a very sloppy, in a very not subtle whatsoever way. And here's what I'm talking about: like this comic is a really good tool for learning about writing. Because I feel like like I want to write something, and I don't want it to suck. So you got to read a lot to see, like, oh, I don't like that, blah, blah, blah. And this this is a good tool. So if you want to write, just totally stick around, because we're going to be pointing out some shit that you definitely don't want to be doing. So this right here is, like, he's trying to emotionally manipulate people by showing elephants being poached. Because anytime, like, some poachers get stomped or mauled or arrested or whatever... We celebrate that. Literally every, like, a guy got mauled to death, like, a couple months ago. People were like, good. Which is, yeah, that's obviously my reaction as well. Also, he's referencing a scene that has nothing to do with the rest of the comic whatsoever. So he's trying to, like, manipulate your emotions by showing you some tragic shit that everyone, like, everyone but poachers, maybe even po poachers are like, I gotta feed my family. This is the only way I know how. You best learn you better go to, like, fucking ITT Tech Africa or something, because we don't like this. Stop shooting fucking elephant. <laughs> but I'm just saying, he's showing you a scene to make you feel something, but it's so out of nowhere, it's so immediate, it has nothing, it's just poorly done. That's what I'll say about it. And then we cut to Spider-Man, which the transition is like, oh, dead elephants? You know what that makes me think of? Spider-Man in New York City getting beaten up at a book fair. Was that not your answer? Because that was Nick Spencer's answer. So we see Spider-Man, he's getting fucked up. It's nothing... No, sir, my life is coming up nothing but sunshine and roses these days. <laughs> Spidey, you're covered in rings. And we see he's getting beat up by Man Mountain Marco. I've never heard of that guy. Spider-Man is the most 
the character I've read the most, and then Batman, but I've never heard of Man Mountain Marco, and The Ringer, which I have heard of, which I gotta tell you, that, this right here, if he had some crazy looking teeth, he'd be even crazier. But see what Nick Spencer here is doing, when we get into this pseudo-comic type of shit. This is where it's also gonna feel real bad for the Spidey fans out there. He's got these D-list superheroes, which even Spider-Man references and calls them D-list. He so you're throwing Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Like, I feel disgusted really caring about this. Like I'm getting into some nerd territory and I don't like it. I don't like it whatsoever. I gotta go buy some fucking sneakers and be flexing on people at the mall so people know that I'm street after I do this. But um So he's got D-list villains who are talking about libraries and Amazon, you know that shit that's in the fucking media right now? And he's beating up these D- so... Oh my god, I hope I am being- articulating my point here. You're- you're- Spider-Man, one of the biggest superheroes of all time, and you're making him go against these D-listers. Now, there's nothing wrong with a D-list villain, uh, if you change him, if you try to elevate his status. Cause look, Man Mountain Marco, I have no preconceptions about him at all. He should be like, a cannibal. Just straight up eating people right now in this fucking lobby and then you're like, holy shit, is Man Mountain Marco like an OG? Is he a fucking A-lister? Is he S-tier? What's going on? But no, it's just like the whole thing is jokey and it's not fun or interesting and you're like, oh, Lindsay is Spider-Man, it's supposed to be jokey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let me get to that. So, I don't think this is very entertaining at all. It's just listening to me gripe. I try not to make these type of videos, but here we are. Here we are. You can click. You can close. I'll just give everyone a second to close out. Whew, okay, nobody's watching. Alright, so what this is... It's like, okay, Spider-Man, he's not a serious character. But, the biggest moments of his career are these really huge emotional wrenching moments where he just thrives in terrible conditions or something. Spider-Man himself is not serious. But just because you put someone in, you can put a not serious person in a serious situation and then you see them thrive. That's the whole, that's the whole crux of Spider-Man. He's not serious, but he also is, but he keeps it light, but he can still tackle really heavy emotional stuff and battles and everything. It's not all jokey. It's not all like this. That's why we like Spider-Man. Like, I'm not serious at all, but you can put me in serious situations and I'll probably do fine, but it's all about, like, the character. Like, am I, am I, am I getting through to anybody here? Am I even getting through to myself? I'm just saying, <sighs> Spider-Man deserves better than this shit. And then, like, Nick Spencer's not even all up on the comedy, right? So he buys, he doesn't even buy the bookseller's like, hey, I'm trying to support your independent bookseller. He's like, no, Spidey, you can have these free books. So then he gives these guys two free books. So I'm thinking, I'm like, okay, Nick Spencer, you're going on the comedy route? What are the book titles? What are the really funny book titles going to be? It's going to be something to do with jail or something. But the, no, it never tells us what the book titles are. I'm like, dude, I'm like fucking three pages in. I've been talking for almost ten minutes. Oh my god. Ugh. So he just gives them these books and he's like, you're going to have a lot of time to read. But it's not anything funny. It's like, give them some fucking Junie B. Brown or whatever. Give them some girl books or something. Leave on, leave on a laugh. But no, he's like... Yeah, you can you can read these in prison, and then they're like, you know what, he seems like he's in a good place. He's really being positive right now. These three pages, four pages, one, two, three, four, are a complete and utter failure on every count. If you're gonna be, if you're gonna go, like, super jokey and funny and meta with Spider-Man, do it. Watch some comedy specials. Go to a comedy club. Interact with people who call themselves funny. Because Nick Spencer, I don't think you're that funny, dude. And then he's like, hey, some things are going my way. And we cut back to he and Mary Jane are together. And apparently that's a big deal for people. I don't really care about it. I'm more into that black cat Felicia Hardy pairing. You're like, she doesn't actually like Peter. I don't care. Ditch Peter. Felicia's the one. Mary Jane is vanilla. And I'm like, this comic's going to make me lose my goddamn mind. So they're finally together, and she's like, look, we've been given an opportunity here. A fresh art. Wink, 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 wink. 
And sure, maybe the circumstances are a little unusual, terrifying, but here's the thing. I still love you, Peter. Never really stopped, if I'm honest. No. Yeah, me too. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so, they're finally together because his entire life is fucking destroyed. He doesn't have a job. He's lost all his credibility. His degrees have been revoked, which, complete side note, if you graduate, you keep, you, you get to keep the degree. I'm sure if you, you find out to do, like, heinous crimes or something, they'll be like, we're gonna need that degree back, but no. Even if I cheated, you gave it to me. Deuces, I'm out. And also, let's let's pr stop pretending that degrees mean anything, really. I mean, certain types of degrees, like medical degrees, they don't give out honorary degrees, but I'm just saying honorary degrees are a thing, and they just give them out if, you, if they like you. So, and it's like, and then when I go to my, mm-hmm, girl, this guy's, Peter, he's a fucking loser right now. Why are you even trying to get with this guy? You didn't want to be with him when he had all his shit together. But now you want to be with him when his entire life is destroyed? I feel like it's a little bit of pity. I feel like maybe she's got some codependency issues. I don't know what's going on here. I don't like it. Introduce a new girl. I don't give a fuck. I mean, he's got Mary Jane. G I almost said Jane Grey. Gwen Stacy. Felicia Hardy sometimes. Bring, bring in a girl with black hair into the mix. I'm just saying. Ugh. So, fuck me, dude. I'm not having any fun whatsoever. So he goes to class and he sees the lizard there. And that's that was the beat that it ended on in the last issue. See, now I'm going to get him back into the writing, the writing tips thing of this. Yes, I am a professor. I just I just received an honorary degree from your mother. So he goes into his classroom because he has to go back to they're like, "Look, you cheated. We're going to give you another chance." Uh, no. It's my understanding that, dude, like, the first day of all college classes, are like, hey, don't cheat. Here's your syllabus. So he goes in and he sees the loser and he freaks the fuck out. He says he's, uh, an experienced supervillain attack person here. With that fuck, that, this chin could cut glass. So he goes in and he sees the loser there and he's freaked out. Number one, this is, this is wrong. Because... It ends on the beat, on the first issue, it ends seeing the lizard in the classroom. And he's like, man. And I understand, you gotta rehash some stuff. Because some issue, you should treat every issue like it's somebody's first issue. I get that, I understand that. But, the way that this could have been executed better is if he, you just showed him in the classroom, you show the lizard teaching, and you go, God, I can't believe my degree got revoked and I have to be taught by the lizard, one of my sworn enemies. That's it. Boom. That's a panel. And you get more pages to try to do something other than to be like, Oh no, the lizard. Shit. Oh yeah, that's right. I knew this. It's, it's cheap. It's cheating. You didn't even have him freak out in the first issue. And the first issue was like double sized or something. So I'm just saying, if you're writing it, various issues, be consistent with some shit because he saw the lizard and he didn't freak out, but he's freaking out now. Now that he's even more informed. And then he reverts back to his regular self and he has an inhibitor in his brain, or in his neck, by the H brand, that if he... It, as the lizard, if he tries to hurt a human being or even hiss in the wrong direction, which I feel like lizards just hiss all the time, so that probably sucks. It paralyzes him until he eventually reverts back to human form. So why even be the lizard ever? I mean, it explains this later. They say, we're doing tests on myself in, and I need to be the lizard. Okay, but... Like, realistically, why does he have to be the lizard? Is it like a werewolf thing? Like, uncontrollable uncontrollable urges? But I'm just trying to think of, like, in this scenario, just be him all the time? He's sweating pretty profusely, so maybe he's like, oh, as a human I sweat, but as a lizard, I don't know. Oh, God sakes. And then we see... We see Taskmaster and this guy called Black Ant. They're gonna be up to some shenanigans. Who cares? And we see that... Uh, I almost said Doc Ock, that Doc Connors, he's got this machine, and Peter's like, whoa, I recognize this, it's the Isotope Genome Accelerator, and he, and then he says, uh, yeah, I imagine you would know what it is, you would, sure, you mentioned it in your first editorial at the Bugle, 
Now, if you've seen something before and you've written extensively about it and it has contributed to you having radioactive spider powers, if you saw it, no matter how long it's been since you saw it, would you say, hey, I recognize this? No, you would say, oh no, that's the isotope genome, and then isotope genome. You would know exactly what the fuck it is. You wouldn't say, oh, I recognize this. I'm a little familiar with it. I can't remember the precise name. No, you... You know what you know what it is, baby girl. Don't front. And they find out that they're doing like genetic testing to reverse engineer, blah blah blah. He don't he don't want to be the lizard no more. He don't want to be the lizard man. And eventually Taskmaster and Black Ant, they come in, they've got some weak as fuck lines, and of course the lizard he reverts to the lizard, but he can't attack anybody because he's a useless fucking dinosaur. And you know what, he should at least be strapped. I mean, if the lizard, you can't handle business, then regular Doc Connor should be packing a fucking nine in case it, because Empire State University is always getting some fucking shit going on. Just get a fucking nine and you'll be fine. Aren't we trying to arm all the professors? So we, so, uh, as Peter, he talks some smack to Taskmaster so he gets thrown. And he webs some, like, no, I'll show this right. So he gets thrown, and somebody's like, Peter, and he gets himself thrown so he can, like, be away from the crowd. But literally, like, no one comes to his aid, which is, like, fucking bananas, right? I know he's a cheater, and I don't know how far it is into the semester. Maybe he's gonna fuck up the groups. But literally none of them go to his aid. I mean, I know we got a skeleton man, and we got this guy, who's an ant, which, that'll ruin a picnic. But literally no one rushes over him and then he uses that opportunity to jump out of Spider-Man. And they're like, what the hell just happened? Science happened. And this is when I go to the kitchen and I get a fucking knife and I just slit. I just slit at my wrist. Like, look, look at my veins. You can, you, you can see them. If I wanted to end it, it would be so easy. So easy to end it, Nick Spencer. Oh man, what do you think the repercussions would be if I... In my blood, I was like, I kill myself because of Nick Spencer's Amazing, amazing Spider-Man run. Would that be good for comics or bad? Comment down below. So he has some terrible lines that aren't funny whatsoever. He And I do like this. He smashes them in Black Ants. I'm not even 100% sure that's his name. His uh, like eye hole windows of glass, they break. I like that. Attention to detail. And eventually, you see Spider-Man help someone up, but it was Peter. Who's this? Who is this man? If this is this man. So it's just like... A lesson in writing by Nick Spencer.